the most popular titles in the YouTube universe with respects to relationship happens to be how to get a man to uh, miss you, how to make a man miss you. So I thought this would be an interesting conversation to have because today I am quite a bit missing my beloved, my girlfriend, my partner, I should say. And I say this because she's been away on a trip for the last few days visiting her children. And I genuinely miss her right now. And she didn't have to make anything. She didn't have to do anything to make me miss her because she's physically uh, back in Chicago with her family, visiting her grandchildren. So naturally, I miss her. And, and actually, uh, two weeks prior to that, I was on a boy's trip with some of my dearest friends celebrating a big birthday. We did a fishing trip uh, in St. Thomas, uh, St. John's Virgin Islands. And we were also apart, and I missed her as well. Now, that's not what I'm going to talk about today, that kind of missing someone, because that's genuinely being physically apart from them. And I, I guess um, I guess the whole point of missing someone is you are physically apart. However, you can actually be in relationship physically together and actually be missing someone because they're literally gone from the relationship. And that's not what I'm going to talk about as well. So I think this is an interesting conversation because I don't, first off, let me just say this. I don't like the idea of making someone do anything. Okay, let me repeat that. I don't like the idea of making someone miss you. What I want to lean into is something more deeper in this conversation. And yet, when I started this broadcast, I talked about how the YouTube universe has all these videos um, designed to give the appearance of creating an emotion within your partner that makes them miss you and want to come towards you to make them basically it's not even missing you it's making them want to come towards you and i think that's very unhealthy advice if you follow this because it's playing games playing games and I want to give you some example of these games before I lean into the more important conversation because it's not about making a man miss you. More importantly, it's about making, a, making the man or woman genuinely appreciate you. That's right, genuinely appreciate you. Because what I'm experiencing right now with my girlfriend, my partner, my beloved uh, being gone right now is I really appreciate our relationship. I really appreciate our relationship. I am so grateful that we are we are forging a partnership together, that we're co-creating a relationship together. Let me repeat that, that we're co-creating a relationship together. Now we're living together, and within that context of living together, we're doing things as a team. And I want to share with you towards the end of this broadcast of how we got there, because ultimately, it's not about making a man miss you. It's about experiencing a relationship of mutual appreciation and mutual gratitude. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If it is, hit that like button. Please share this video or subscribe to my channel. Because ladies, we are in a, a sea of dysfunctionality right now, in particularly in the relationship realm. And I think part of the problem with that is because these days we're meeting total strangers, meeting total strangers. I want you to think about this for a moment. Kind of think back, you know, everyone loves the idea of I want a traditional relationship. Well, if you go back to traditional times, let's go back to the 1950s or prior to the 1950s here in the United States. Most of the time when two people met, they met in the same town they lived in. They knew each other's families. They knew each other's friends. There was a sense of community, a sense of tribe. And because of that, most likely, you also shared the same values with that person. Your lifestyles were blendable with one another. And that is a huge head start in relationship when you, when you have this, I was about to say grand familiarity, but this strong familiarity for this person because you shared the same friends, you sh your family members knew each other. And in that tribe, if you will, there was tribe accountability. And what I mean to say is, you know, 
I jokingly say, I'm your big brother. If I could be there on a first date for you, I'd be out there with the shotgun pointed at the guy's face saying, what's your intentions with my sister? Well, there's a level of accountability when, when the big brother knows the kid is about to date his sister and like the little kid who's dating the sister is going, oh, wait a minute, if I do something stupid, he might shoot a gun at me or he might beat me up. Well, there's no accountability today in the dating process because as I said before, we're meeting total strangers. In addition, the barrier to en the en barrier, the uh, barrier to entry for sex is incredibly low. You know, it used to be a man had to make the ultimate commitment to a woman to get sex. It used to be if you wanted to get laid, you had to get married. And now all a man has to do is take you out to a few dinners and then he can do what's called relationship talk. He can claim he wants a relationship. And many women will just naturally, will just vol. Oh my God, I, don't, I want to be mindful of my words here. They'll acquiesce to sex to someone that they barely know. And I want you to think about this. It takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time to build the first layer of trust. That's right. It takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time. Sadly, many of you are spending most of your time on the, these devices connecting with someone. Oh, I just got a good morning text from my beloved while she's out, uh, while she's away. That's so sweet of her. I'm going to respond to her as soon as we fin finish this video. By the way, ladies, you can initiate text messages. I will tell you, my sweetheart is usually the first one to initiate the good morning text when we're apart from one another, and I really appreciate that. So coming back to this, I, this, this conversation about acquiescing to sex, what I mean to say is, your idea of relationship might be this, and his idea of relationship might be this, but you're hearing the word, he wants a relationship, he wants something committed, he wants to get married. But what does that look like for him? If he hasn't contemplated, what does a relationship look like for him? It might be, you might be mismatched, and then you're traveling around, you're, you're traveling in this way, and, or he's traveling this way, you're traveling this way, and then you're so far apart that the relationship ends. And then you're gonna play these manipulative games that you're taught from many of these YouTubers out there, which I'm about to share with you, that goes nowhere because short-term manipulation to make a man miss you might temporarily work, and yet it won't work for the long run. So, you know, and this is the game playing, you know, things like let him take the initiative. Well, I just shared with you, my girlfriend just texted me. She took the initiative in the conversation, but let him take the initiative. Folks, a healthy relationship is two people traveling down the road at the same speed, making mutual investment. You, He texts you, you text him. You text him, he texts you. That is a healthier way to approach a relationship. Number two, don't let him think he has you too soon. Okay. I understand that, but in a healthy relationship, it, there's, it's not who falls in love first, per se, whether it's the man or woman. What's more important is not being excessive when, when there's a mismatch. The, remember I talked about the two-lane street? It's about investment. You're making an investment in effort. He's making an investment in effort. It, sh it shouldn't look like you're making all the investment. I agree with that. But don't do it out of out of some sort of manipulation. Do it out of a place of of self restraint and more importantly self control. In the sense is, you know, a relationship is both logical and emotional, and yet sadly for many women they hyper focus on the emotional side, and men tend to hyper focus on the logical side. It's one of the reasons why, you know. Men, women tend to be emotional, emotional, women tend, men tend to be logical, women tend to be emotional. And that space in between, do you know what that's called? Drama. <laughs> and it's oftentimes the women initiating the drama because they're wanting the man to come over to the emotional side and the man wants you to become more on the logical side. So again, mutual investment. Number three, 
Don't say yes to him every time. Look at, I understand the logic behind this advice, but you know, when with my girlfriend, I, I said, look, do you want to go to the movies? Yes. Do you want to go to a restaurant? Yes. Do you want to go do this? Yes. Now we happen to be in each other's orbit at that moment and it just naturally said yes. I don't believe playing hard to get works from a long-term perspective. It might work from a short-term perspective. Okay. Make him feel like he can't live without you. Well, how the hell do you do that? I mean, is it, do you pay all his bills and then he can't live without you? Is that the way to make him? You know, I, I again, a healthy relationship. You know what? One of the things I'm going to preface right now. If you haven't read the book, how to Make Love All the Time by Barbara DeAngelis. I highly recommend this book because if you really want to create that kind of relationship where you can't live without each other, then use the tools and the advice in this book to create the type of relationship where he's going to genuinely appreciate you just like I appreciate, appreciate my sweetheart. There's a picture of her right there. That's actually a picture from our first date. And I'll lean into that a little bit more in a second. Make, time, make the time spending together amazing so he wants to be around you. Well, I believe both people should be doing that. Both men and women equally should be creating an environment where it's so much fun to be with each other that you genuinely feel this level, as I say, not loneliness when you're apart, genuine appreciation when you're apart. And it goes on to say one more thing, make him miss you by not contacting him. Okay, again, game playing. Look, folks, I know many of you are trapped. I use the word trapped in a emotional cycle with somebody who's long distance, for example, okay? By the way, my coffee mug says, I make the world go around, what do you do? I love these that's all mugs. You're trapped in emotional relationships, especially long distance, or even possibly trauma bonds with relationships. Folks, if you haven't initiated the inner work, if you haven't initiated that inner work so you can show up with strong relationship skills, oftentimes you gravitate to other dysfunctional people. And when two dysfunctional people are operating in relationship, it's a constant struggle, it's a constant drama within the relationship because you haven't done the inner work to heal one another. This is why, by the way, all the books I recommend uh, below, one of the books I recommend is uh, The Hoffman Process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas. So you can actually avoid getting trapped in these tr uh, both trauma or emotional relationships with people who are incapable of being in relationship. Folks, if you're not familiar with my emotional maturity relationship skills chart, Roughly, and this is not a fact, it's merely opinion. I believe roughly 20% of the population has clinical, uh, emotional, um, or, or, or weak relationship skills. I mean, we're talking about dysfunctionality here, true, severe dysfunctionality. And while I say 20% of the population is relatively healthy, most everyone is in the dysfunctional range. And Wait, there's an 80% chance you're going to meet someone who has terrible relationship skills. And it's quite possible. And I know you all, every single woman thinks, every human being believes their own delusion that they're good at this stuff. I can tell you people who are even good at it, like myself, still find themselves feeling very dysfunctional. So that many are so blind, men and women alike, that they enter into dysfunctional relationships because they haven't healed within themselves. And my invitation for you is to heal. This is why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. So you can actually, and by the way, all the teachings in the back of the book, I highly recommend that. Check out that list. These are great re resources to come at it from a healthy, emotional, strong relationship skills way. Because what's going to make a man miss you, or more importantly, what's going to create a relationship where you genuinely appreciate each other? Folks, where you genuinely 
Mm. Here, I want to say this is missing. Mm. Or it's missing like this. Mm. <laughs> um, true appreciation comes from emotional intimacy. That's right, emotional intimacy. When I talked about the Barbara DeAngelis book, I'm talking about it because it's a, a vehicle to create emotional intimacy. And if you need some greater understanding of emotional intimacy, I highly recommend checking out Robert Master's book, Emotional Intimacy. Now, this is a thick book. There was a lot of, con oh, there's a picture in here. <laughs> or there's a card in here. One of the chapters, I was I was reading the chapter on guilt, a stalemate parent-child bind. Understanding emotions helps prepare you to be in a relationship where there is strong emotional intimacy. Because through strong emotional intimacy, can two people actually generate that kind of loving feeling for one another where they genuinely appreciate each other and feel gratitude. Because ultimately, this isn't about the, the longing for someone. This is about creating a relationship where you're truly feeling that sense of, of connection, of belonging, of appreciation and gratitude, not the emotional vacuum that happens when you miss someone. And thankfully, even though my girlfriend and I are apart right now, I don't feel a disconnect because I know we have this strong emotional connection with each other. Now, one of the things we do in our relationship is we do um, couples workshops, but we do, she and I do once a month an individual workshop of actually practicing our communication skills. And if you haven't read this book, I Hear You by Michael Sorensen. The Surprisingly Simple Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationships. I love this book because it gives you the skills, the tools to communicate in a way that actually lands on one another for a healthy, happy relationship. Folks, I know you know I'm a dating relationship coach and I, I, I'm not here to sell you on some big, gigantic program. I'm here to help you choose better partners fact, that's my whole coaching program. If you need help with that, check out the link below to a free discovery call in the comments and in the description. I teach you which questions to ask someone to determine if they're genuinely a good fit for you. And why I'm bringing this up is learning effective communication skills. One of the skills I teach in my private coping, coaching is radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. And also, if you're in relationship with someone, how to shift the narrative from where it is at today to something much stronger. And I can help you with that. And these books I recommend can help you with that as well. And lastly, what I want to lean into for the last few moments is the book, The Five Love Languages. When you can actually speak to each other, if you haven't read this book by Gary Chapman, I highly recommend it. Get the link below. If you want to create that emotional bond, with each other that gets your relationship to a surface relation. This would be the surface and this would be deeper. If you want to get to that deeper level, then I highly recommend checking out all these books because ultimately surface level relationships, you can play the games listed here. You can play these games listed here or you can, and all the game playing in the world will, will only work temporarily. Ultimately, a strong bond with another human being comes through emotional intimacy. And through emotional intimacy, can you find being with a partner who genuinely, genuinely appreciates you and feels gratitude? In fact, I want to say this one last thing before I wrap up. I want you to use this going forward. Instead of saying thank you going forward, use the words, I appreciate that. In fact, if you appreciate this video, say, Jonathan, I appreciate that. And add the word gratitude or grateful. I'm very grateful for this video, for example. I'm very, I, I feel a sense of gratitude that you're in my life. Substitute the words thank you for appreciation, gratitude, and grateful, because they're very powerful words that help create intimacy with one another. And that's my invitation for you today. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please post a comment below.
Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell. Look at the description below for all that I recommend, including private coaching or my group, uh, what's called uh, Midlife of Mastery, where you get direct access to me on a regular basis for merely $20 a month. Check out the links below. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. And lastly, missing you. Bye-bye. <laughs>